Alright, I know you got tired of those people who are always using async await and you're watching them like a f***ing idiot. Well, not that much, but you still got no b****. In this video, I'll explain to you how to work with asynchronous JavaScript in a couple minutes. We'll be taking a deep dive into the different ways that you can work with asynchronous code in JavaScript and how to use callbacks, promises, and async await to handle async operations. Make sure to stick to the end of this video or otherwise you'll get out with your in your hand. No clue at all. Let's begin. Look at this. The code snippet we have here is a simple example of an async operation using the set timeout function. If you don't know the set timeout function, I don't know what to say, but no wonder you got no bitch. It takes two arguments, a callback function and a time in milliseconds. The callback function is executed after the specified time has passed. It's like a game of wait for it. Ready or not, here it comes. Oh, it's hot like a f idiot. Anyways, as you can see, the set timeout function does not block the execution of the other code. The console log statement before and after the set timeout function are executed immediately. The output in the console shows that the finished message is logged after a delay of 3 seconds. Now I know that sounds hard as f to understand but in the end it's like playing hide and seek. I'm counting, you go f hide. But I can't look right away, can I? I need to wait until I'm finished counting. And the same concept when working with asynchronous code. Callbacks are the oldest way of handling async operations in JavaScript. As you can see, the callback function is passed an argument to the set timeout function. This function is called when the specified time has passed. Let's add more functionality to the callback function to see how it works. I'll create a function and make it look a message to the console and call the function inside of my callback function. As you can see, we can add any amount of functionality to the callback function and it will be executed once the async operation is complete. But we have a problem and that they can quickly become hard to read when dealing with complex async operations or when we need to chain multiple async operations together. Like playing a game of telephone. After a few turns, you don't even know what the message was anymore. And here is where the fun begins. Promises are a more recent addition to the JavaScript language and they provide a cleaner and a more elegant way to handle async operations. A promise is an object that represents the eventual completion or failure of an async operation. The main advantage of promises is that they allow for chaining async operations together in a more readable and maintainable way. Well again, an example of that, it's like building a house of cards. You got to be so f***ing careful, but it can be pretty cool afterwards. But as a programmer who got no big how can you work with promises? Well, promises are easy to work with once you understand the basic concepts. Let's take a look at this API call example. Promises have a then method which is called when the promise is fulfilled and a catch method which is called when the promise is rejected or when something wrong happens. This makes it easy to chain multiple async operations together and it leads to much more readable code. It's like a game of connect the dots. It starts to make sense once you see the biggest picture. No, not that picture. But this is not the best way of doing it. Let me now introduce you to the perfect syntax. It builds on top of promises and makes it even easier to work with async operations. It's like a magic wand. With just a couple of words, you can make async operations disappear. With async await, you can write asynchronous code that looks and behave like synchronous code. All you have to do is use the await keyword in front of the async operation and you will get the same result that you would with with a synchronous operation. It's like going from reading a book to watching a movie. Same story, different experience. Still no bit. Remember, callbacks, promises, and async await. They're all tools in your toolbox. Choose the right one for the job. And remember, don't be afraid of async code. It's not as scary as it seems. It's just like jumping into a cold pool. It's refreshing once you're in. And now, just give me a kiss, dad. Anyways, to know if GitLab is better than GitHub, check out this video and I'll see you in the next one.